Longevity Lifestyle Designs, this is Zach Hero Secrets of Longevity.com and today I'm going to be making an elixir or a pre-workout elixir or a post-workout elixir. And this is going to be a pre one today but I often make the pretty much the exact same one for after a workout. Um, so I'm doing my bodybuilding program right now and it's been very successful so far. And one of the most important things with that program is that I'm eating about six meals a day around six to seven hundred calories, sometimes a little less, sometimes as high as seven hundred, but six hundred is the medium. And the really interesting thing was I was calculating um, my dietary caloric and uh, protein and gram per day intake uh, at the start of the whole program and I was looking at uh, the nutrition content of my average elixir that I usually make, which is usually a full blender with like loaded with stuff and I drink that once a day. Um, it, is drank over a period of time, like an hour or even up to two hours, but um, after looking at the nutrition content of that, I realized it was close to uh, 1,300, if not 1,400 calories, just in that one uh, blenderful. Uh, it's because it's loaded with nuts and seeds, perhaps some sort of oil, sometimes milk that would really bring up the calories. And so I've decided to go for, on a more frequent basis, drinking less. Uh, fluid or less elixir. Um, so about three times a day I'm drinking an elixir and actually the first elixir of the day I make as a large amount but I pour it into two halves and I consume those in two, like three hours apart basically. So I put either if I'm at home I put it in the fridge or I'm going out to take it with me and I'll drink it uh, two to three hours later after the, I drink the first one. Um, so in one of those it's almost 600 calories, perhaps a little more and it's around 35 grams of protein. So when I was the full blender full, I was getting uh, over 70 grams of protein. If I were to include, you know, the scoop of somewhere, the milk, and the nuts and seeds, and everything else that's going in there, with quite a lot of protein. Um, it's hard to know if my, I guess my body adapted to that large drink to a certain degree. And now that I'm drinking it in sort of spaced out quantities, it's, I think it's probably more usable by my body. Um, it's been fine drinking that much food and I'm also my other meals are more solid of course um, and this is going to be an example of just one that I've sort of been doing at least the sort of recipe that I've been following um, so we've started with one cup of milk and two cups of nettle leaf tea so I just poured boiling water over nettle leaf tea and let it steep for a bit um, so it might look like just milk but it's actually quite watered down by the tea so we're going to start with our more coarse ingredients so I'm going to start with one tablespoon of bee pollen this is just dehydrated bee pollen, so it's got that hard granular quality to it, which is good to get going in the first blend. I'm going to add just one tablespoon of chia seed. This is straight seeds there. Kind of get stuck to the wet spoon of it, but that's okay. And two tablespoons of hemp seed. And hemp seed is the most biologically available uh, protein of any plant food, or of any whole food rather I should say. So hemp seeds are mostly composed of the protein edistin, so that's a synthesis of several amino acids. And it's known to be the most easily digestible protein found in nature in whole food form. And then it's also composed of albumin, which is probably the second most easily digestible uh, amino acid or amino acid complex in a protein form. And it's good to note that also eggs contain albumin. Um, so that's a very easily digestible protein, which is what we're looking for um, as a source of protein and calories if we're very athletically inclined or just want to have that easily digestible protein. Um, I always add a little dash of kelp powder. I've just gotten to the habit of shaking this in. Probably around an eighth of a teaspoon. And it doesn't affect the flavor whatsoever, but I know I'm getting a good amount of iodine every day through adding that to all my different uh, meals. The last thing we're going to add before we blend it up is some honey, some raw honey. And we've been going around one and a half tablespoons per drink. And you know, all the calories are better. I guess that's maybe closer to two tablespoons. It might seem like a lot for some people. It's calorically dense, so that's right there is 120 calories if that was two tablespoons. And you know, all the better. So we're going to give the first blend of these coarser ingredients so that they're thoroughly mixed in. It's looking good, quite frothy. Some stuff stuck to the side, so I usually just 
push that back in. So next we're going to add some pine pollen powder. Got this from Sir Thrival. You can check it out at the links below. Any of these products that I'm talking about, you can find below. Um, I've also written an article recently about pine pollen, which if you haven't read, I highly recommend reading. It was a fun one to write. A bit of the history there as well. The cult history, which is quite fascinating, but uh, the pine tree and pine cone in general. So I'm adding just half a teaspoon in there. And it's high in bioavailable testosterone, uh, androstenedione, androsterone, and DHEA, as well as a wide variety of other minerals, much like bee pollen, and um, also amino acids, which is just something else we want to bring in plenty of when we're following an athletic endeavor of any kind. The other thing we're going to be adding that's quite anabolic, so the uh, pine pollen is very anabolic. We're going to add a tablespoon of colostrum, uh, colostrum powder, and again from Sir Thrival, is one level tablespoon. Got an article written about this as well. If you want to learn more about these anabolic foods that are very beneficial for the health, and you also want to help dismiss any conflicts you might have in your mind about uh, consuming foods that have uh, usable pro-hormones or actual bioidentical or identical hormones to uh, our human biology that can be found in t uh, pine pollen and colostrum. Uh, you can check out those articles to learn more about because there have been some people out there on the internet uh, just sort of spreading things without um, actually having much research to back themselves up. And I've even confronted these people on some occasions and said, you know, there's no evidence that shows this. And it actually shows the opposite in that these things can help prevent things like cancer uh, and these other problems that can come from synthetic isolated uh, hormones that might be identical to what are in here, except that they're synthetic and they're, they're isolated, so they have a much different effect on the body. You know, you take any food and you can isolate things out of it that are damaging to the health and that we could sort of go all up in arms and say, this is the worst thing for us, we shouldn't uh, consume it. So you can take like fructose from fruit and say, you know, fruit contains fructose, this is the worst thing, you should never touch any of it. Uh, we know that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you don't want to go overboard on that thing, as well as you wouldn't want to go overboard on wheatgrass. You know, there's components in wheatgrass you could isolate and say, you know, this causes nausea in some people, so any amount's going to be bad. No, very small amounts, in two to four ounces a day is normal. Drinking 32 ounces a day is not normal. Same with pine pollen and colostrum. Although there's no, with these very sort of tonic adaptogenic whole foods, there's no upper limit to the dosage, most people are going to have problems if they suddenly start taking, you know, a cup of pine pollen a day that might start running into some sort of reaction, whether it's their body not being used to that or they're cleansing something. It's hard to say. There haven't been studies on those high dosages. But we know in normal dosage ranges that they're perfectly safe because of their long, long track record and the fact that um, these things are health promoting and healing. Um, the reason you don't see teenagers getting cancer, and, well at least not very often, ones that are athletically and uh, inclined and very robust, is they have high levels of human growth hormone in the body. They have high levels of testosterone. So we have to be very careful about these pervasive um, sort of blanket statements made by some people about foods that really are beneficial when we look at the results people are getting. So we're also going to add a scoop of sunwear protein. Uh, it's my favorite plant-based based protein um, to use. It's 85% protein, pretty much 99% digestibility rate, which is quite impressive because most protein powders, half of it's going to go through you if you're taking that. And while I'm not always for isolated foods, some things in that like this can be very beneficial, especially if you're looking to get extra protein if you're a bodybuilder such as myself. Um, and that's a good 16 grams of protein in one scoop there. So we're going to grow, grate in about a third of a nutmeg nut. I've really been keen on nutmeg lately just because it's in the holiday season. It's usually the flavor commonly consumed at this time in the form of eggnogs and whatnot. I never even been making certain types of eggnogs with nutmeg and some of the rum tincture I made the other day. It's been quite delicious with the raw milk. So I'm just going to grate this little leftover bit into it. To complement the whole androgenic effect of this drink, we're also going to add half a teaspoon of Macunia Prurians extract. Um, it contains L-Dopa, which is a precursor to L or dopamine. And uh, in combination with the other factors in this herb, it's able to raise testosterone levels indirectly, along with that uh, dopamine increasing quality. 
Uh, so dopamine and testosterone work to create the drive in our cells. So creating uh, or adding this to a drink before a workout is great because it's going to keep you super motivated throughout the whole workout as this uh, fuel is going through you. And that's very beneficial because it can help you get the most out of each exercise, each rep. And when you compound perfect workouts on top of each other, you're going to have the best results. Someone had a question about um, the timing that I eat, whether I eat before a workout or after, or don't eat anything before a workout, and sort of what's my protocol around that. I've been eating before my workouts, not like right before I go to the gym, but within maybe half an hour before. I try not to go too close to it because otherwise that's sitting in your stomach and you can feel a bit bogged down. But I think it's important to have a lot of fuel in your body ready to be used before going to a workout so that you can get the best results. Um, there's some people that are following a more condensed eating program where they're eating basically within a six, seven, eight hour period. They're eating maybe two or three very high calorie meals uh, close together in the day. Whereas the approach I'm following is more um, six meals a day of medium amounts of calories. So it's not conducive for me to not eat before a workout because um, I'm eating every three hours roughly. And if I try and delay it too long before a workout, I'm just going to feel drained because my body's been used to um, eating so regularly and eating a sufficient amount of calories every time. So with that, we're going to blend this uh, drink up and we're going to try it and I'll let you know how it is. Of course, I had to forget something, so I'm just going to put a little bit of stevia in there. It's a little shake. It's a nice sort of light brown color. Smells good. That's how I like it. It's smooth, sweet. Um, I've also been in the habit of drinking these fairly fast, not guzzling it, of course, but um, taking it down slow enough, but not so slow that it takes me more than uh, 20 minutes to drink it because um, I'm eating so frequently, so I want to leave as much time in between as possible, so I don't want to make this small drink last me an hour, for instance. Um, and that also helps my body stay on track with digesting efficiently and not continually working over the course of one hour, which I think can be a bit much. So the other thing I do before a workout when I've got a drink like this is I take some digestive enzymes. Um, these are high in protein digestive enzymes, which you can check out at the link below, from the Hippocrates Health Institute. And that's just going to ensure the maximum amount of uh, amino acids are available to my muscles and to the, my whole body at all times um, whenever I'm consuming a meal. So I'm taking this with every um, sort of sufficient calor calorically dense meal um, because that is part of the program I'm following. I'll cover that in future videos, of course, perhaps more of the science behind that. Um, but with the results I've seen in some of my friends who have followed this program with the enzymes, uh, I'm convinced it's a pretty important part. So with that, I'm going to say take care and price life without limits.